Most of the ships have this heavy cargo and batteries. Every time they put this new battery, because one battery is exploded. Every time they add electrician, ETO or ETI, why the battery? Every time they ask why and why. Today is the time that you may know what are the things I'm going to do to fix this problem. Discharge rate of the battery by putting it to glow. To glow, it reduces from 13.5 to 13.1. Verify that the voltage of the battery number two are good and it's full charge. And this battery number one is not charging. Why? I am always getting trouble with a battery. As I found, I have two batteries connected. Parallel, but these two batteries have different ampere hour value. The problem there is when we are getting charged, the battery having different ampere hour rate, and my charger is set, let's say, 15 amperes. The battery having 82 ampere hour is always getting full charge in a short period of time. But my battery having bigger ampere hour value, let's say 150 ampere hour, getting its full charge in a long period of time. I found one battery is always getting higher temperature about 55 to 63 degrees Celsius while the other one getting a low temperature 30, 32, 33, 41 degrees Celsius also I found charger set up are not good so this scenario will push you a battery trouble to put that I need to check the wirings, the configurations, the circuit breaker, the battery charger selectors, and the battery service connections. 
I'm getting why this having low temperature and one battery having high temperature because they have different ampere hour rate which are connected in parallel in one charger. Guys, now I'm preparing this material for you to see why one battery getting hotter and another battery are not getting hotter. Using a Tepinens theorem, Kirchhoff law, Ohm's law, you may prove why the battery is getting hotter. First, I just write here a circuit. This is electrical circuit. And this electrical circuit have a battery supply charger positive negative having 20 volts with 15 amperes. And from here, this I represent the batteries. Since battery have internal resistance, a shift in amperes, and I charge the battery one and battery two. As you can see, value is generated from this way. First, I put here 20 ampere. I have here fuse switch 10 ampere. This is my battery. 12 volts with 150 ampere hour. And another battery is 12 volts with 82 ampere hour. Since the two batteries are connected in parallel, you need to identify why this 82 ampere hour is hotter than 150 ampere hour. So, in order for me to convert this, I need to use Ohm's law. Getting the equivalent resistance using equation power is equal to I squared times the resistance, and power is equal to current multiplied by the voltage. Using this equation 1 and 2, I need to equate this formula. Since P is equal to P, which is I squared, and this P is equal to P, which is equal to I squared times R, you may get the resistance value. By transposition, you may see here I and I squared, this must be cancelled out. So I can get voltage of over the current. This 12 volts divided by 150 ampere hour, I have 0 0.08 volts. This is for my 150 ampere hour batteries. The resistance of 12 volts divided by 82 amperes hour, I have 0 0.146 ohms per hour. So from there, I can get the equivalent resistance value. 0.08 and 0.146 from there I need to know the current actually flowing here at first glance you are thinking that this 15 ampere is equivalent of the sum of the I1 and I2 but first using this equation you may get the actual current value of the battery having 150 ampere hour and battery having 82 ampere hours. So I'm applying a parallel formula for the resistance in parallel to get the total resistance. You need to multiply my R1 by R2 divided by the sum of the R1.
one is 0 0.3 so this will develop with this one this little bit if you multiply it by 0 0.53 volts you will get 0 0.795 volts and then from from this uh, drawing 415 with this one 0 0.8 ohms 0 0.146 ohms you may reduce it on this by the voltage that we are getting here 0 0.0795 volts is what? 0 0.0.79 volts and 15 amperes so having this you are going to turn again on this circuit put the 0.0795 volts here then there is 15 amperes and then here there is individual resistance as you can see individual resistance we can get also different heavy in order for you to compute the current flowing on the 150 ampere hour rate batteries you only get put voltage 0.795 volts here in your unit and the resistance value of 0 0.08 ohms in the denominator also in order for you to get the current on the i2 you only put 0.795 volts on the denominator on the denominator the 0 0.146 ohms so from there we can get the Value. Having these guys, I have now 20, 15 amperes, 15, 0 0.08 ohms, 0.14. Here I got how much? 0 0.08 ohms and 0 0.146. So, to compute the current of each battery. This battery is having resistance of 0.08 ohms before it heavy 150 ampere hour rate with 12 volts and this 0 0.146 ohms before have ampere hour rate of 82 ampere hour with 12 volts. Now for you to determine the current, here we go. This formula and this formula. I1 must be equal to voltage all over the resistance 1 and I2 is the voltage all over the resistance 2 again, what voltage are we going to use here? don't use 0.795 volts this 0.7 will start why this current why we have to put the current here we are going to compute the current here because we are explaining why this battery is sometimes hotter why sometimes this battery becomes hotter so for you to understand we are going to compute the current on the battery number one and battery number two this battery one is 150 ampere hour 12 volts this is 82 ampere hour 12 volts having different internal resistance this 0.08 ohms and 0 0.146 ohms is the internal resistance okay using this formula we can get now i1 is equal to 0.795 volts divided by 0.08 ohms having 9.9375 amperes it means to say that the battery having 12 volts 150 ampere hour has a resistance value this 12 volts having 150 ampere hour with a resistance value of 0 0.08 ohms has a current of 0 volts and also the battery having 12 volts with 82 ampere hour has a resistance of 0 0.146 ohms and you may get a current of 5.445 amps.
for you to see you may take a look 0.795 divided by 0.08 we have 9.97 that is for battery number 1 current for battery number 2 current we have 0.795 divided by 0.1.6 you can get 5.445 ampere so from here we are going to check if the current that we obtain 9.93 and 5.44 if you add it together having an equivalent value of 15 ampere look using model analysis 15 is equal to I1 plus I2 using nodal analysis and electrical circuit I total is equal to I1 plus I2 so now we will check I total is 15 ampere right and the computed value for current for the battery number 1 is 9.94 we can put here 9.9375 and the current from the battery number 2 having 32 ampere hour we have 5.445 if you add it together you can get 15.4 ampere oops there is 15 ampere total we get 15.4 ampere this point four are the losses the total current 15 is equivalent to the i1 and i2 so from here we can determine the heat generated for batteries this heat generated for battery 1 and battery 2 using the power formula power is equals to i squared multiplied by the resistance power 2 is equal to i2 squared multiplied by the r2 so this is the current 9.94 amperes multiplied by 9.94 amperes multiplied by 0.2 and for the power of the battery number 2 5.44 amperes multiplied by 5.44 amperes multiplied by 0 0.146 ohms you may get the power here P1 is equal to I squared R994 the battery number 1 having 150 ampere hour rate 12 volts 150 ampere hour rate have 7.9 watts and battery having 32 ampere R volts having 4.32 watts as you imagine the incandescent lamp the incandescent lamp having more wattage generates more heat let's say you put 100 watts bulb this 100 watts bulb generates more heat generates more illumination and this 60 watts bulb generates less heat the ampere of rate getting lower power getting low power means you are getting lower temperature while the 150 ampere hour getting high power getting high power means you are converting the electrical energy into a power in a form of heat. That's why my battery having 150 watts 100 has Also I found
have two batteries with different ampere hour rate connected in parallel. First, giving low ampere, low ampere, getting a full charge. But the higher ampere hour value not getting full charge. You need to take your multimeter. negative terminal the black negative group on the negative battery it's on this multimeter put a 200 voltage rate DC and then make measure the voltage of battery number one here is the positive terminal now I'm getting 10.6 10.6 volts after charging it by 28 hours, the battery remained in 10.6. Now, also, I'm going to check the battery voltage of number 2. The battery voltage of number 2 is now 13.6 volts. It's a good sign of having a full charge battery. Now we are going to check size. Now I prepare computation on how you determine the proper charge of your batteries. For example, I have a battery charger having a set value 20 volts and I set a 15 ampere charging current. If you have battery number 1 having 12 volts and there is 150 ampere hour, number 2 having 12 volts with 82 ampere hour. For you to compute the charging time period for dead drain or new batteries, if you have 150 ampere hour rate and you need you are going to charge it by 15 amperes you may get 10 hours to get maybe 82 ampere hour and divide it by 15 amperes that you are applying to charge the batteries you may get 5.5 hours before a battery getting to charge as you analyze having 150 ampere hour rate, having 15 ampere charge, since our battery are connected in one charger, I need 10 hours. Another one, having 82 ampere hour with 15 ampere charging value, I need 5.5. It means to say, this 82 ampere hour at 5.5 hours for charge when another one is not getting good charge that is the, this is the reason why for you to be able for you to know how much is the charging current you may need to apply on battery to get it charged example if I have 12 volt battery with 32 ampere hours this is the battery to be charged I need to set the value of the charger having 20 volts output by 10 ampere this is the charger set value so for new battery or dead batteries charging time is equal to 82 divided by 10 ampere if you divide it 82 by 10 ampere you may get 8.2 hours to get a battery full charge but if your battery is only discharged and you are initially used it you can charge it by 10 ampere charging time is equal to 82 all over 10 multiplied by a constant factor of 0.145 this constant factor is derived from a battery 
which is initially used and drained. So having 32 by 10 multiplied by 0.145, you can you may get 1.2 hours to get the discharge battery to become good charge. Take note if the battery 150 ampere hours with 20 volts 15 amperes, this is the charge. For new or dead batteries, 150, you may divide it by 15, and you may get 10 hours to get a battery full charge. This 10 hours is free, which is initially used. This, again, multiplying factor of 0 0.145 is be applied. So, 150 ampere hour in amperes it becomes 1.45 hours if you apply 15 ampere for 150 ampere hour battery because if you are getting 1.45 hours more your battery will get hotter and hotter and it may it may be slow okay guys now we are able to know how much ampere or charging current values needed for a charger to be applied for your 82 ampere hour batteries and 150 ampere hour batteries. Take note, for 82 ampere hour batteries, you may apply 10 amperes for 1 hour and 25 minutes. That is for initially use batteries and for 150 ampere hour battery you need to charge it by 15 ampere charging current value of your charger within one hour and 45 minutes or less for initial use battery now i'm ready to show you to make a further charging as you can see the voltage is increasing from 15 volts going 16.7 until we get a desired charging value this is 16.2 number 2 is 16.2 number 1 is 16.4 they are charging with different Charging weight 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, And reminders while charging, make sure that the battery will never exceed the temperature for about 45 degrees. If you have experience that your battery is exceeding 45 degrees Celsius, you may need to stop the charging, cool it, and after lowering by 40 degrees, you begin again charging. Normally, battery is operated from 15 degrees to 23 degrees. Even 25 degrees can but not lower than 15 degrees because if lower than 15 degrees you may freeze up the electrolyte inside of the batteries that's why on the cold area most of the batteries have built-in heater now we have 16.4 for number two we have 16.5 for number one this battery is 12 volts with 82 ampere hour rate now i'm charging it for 15 amperes and you will see how much time need to charge it fully to start the engine of the lifeboat number one this battery is made by yokohama gold MF series D3 RMPF 
Yokohama Gold 95B31 RMF <coughs> This is very good for your car to start your car and be good Now battery number one get racing it becomes 16.6 and battery 2 now become 16.5 okay guys now we are going to start the lifeboat engine using battery number 1 we try to get the start the engine having now 40.1 volts okay now we are going to again we are using the battery number 2 the battery to now having voltage of by selecting the switch in the battery number 2 the battery now having 14.0 and we are going to test if he can start the life mode engine number 2 battery now we have 14 start okay Battery number two is able to start the engine. Thank you for watching. Charge the battery for only thirty. I charge it by fifteen amperes for only 35 minutes it means to say the higher the charging current that you may apply on your battery you may get the short period of time of charging so this battery battery thank you for watching